Welcome to part one of my Introduction to Filming Techniques video series, which will be all about shot sizes. For other videos in the series, like camera angles and camera movement, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. All right, so there's obviously a lot that goes into each and every shot in a film, from the shot size, to the camera angle, to how the camera moves through the scene. But the truth is, your shots must also work together and be intentional if you want to tell an effective story. Essentially, the more aesthetically and dramatically effective your collection of shots are, the more impactful of an experience or story you will construct for your audience. And typically, the first thing people think of when setting up their shot is the shot size. Shot size, or field of view, is determined by how much of the frame your subject occupies in relation to the environment that surrounds them. Essentially, you can break shot sizes up into three different categories. Wide, medium, and close. To start, let's talk about wide shots, which are created by either moving the camera further away from the subject and or by using a lens with a lower millimeter on it, like 16 millimeters for example. Extreme wide shots are often used to define the scale and scope of a scene's geography in relation to the subjects, which will often appear distant and or small within the frame. Typically, the wider the shot, the more emphasis that is placed on the environment or location. In film, extreme wide shots are often used as establishing shots, which are the most common way to open a scene or even an entire movie. Establishing shots are designed to introduce the audience to when and where the scene or movie is taking place. For when, the shot might establish that the scene takes place at a certain time of day, or during a specific season, or even help set the movie at a specific point in history. For where a scene is happening, an establishing shot may briefly show the exterior of a building, like a house or a restaurant, or it might introduce or showcase the unique landscape of a city, or even planet, whether they are real or part of the geography of a fictional world or realm, like Middle Earth or Asgard. Establishing shots are also used quite often as transitions between scenes or locations or even from commercial breaks as a way to keep the story moving. Moving in a bit, wide shots typically help to confirm much of the details introduced by an establishing shot, such as the geography of the scene, but they more so tend to emphasize how the subjects are interacting within that environment. Wide shots can be an effective way to express isolation or insignificance, but they can also be used as a way to include or show many subjects at once. Wide shots are also synonymous with the master shot. A master shot introduces or reaffirms which characters and objects are in the scene and where they are in relation to each other. For example, in this scene from a marriage story, the wide master shot allows us to stay oriented within the scene even when we cut into closer single shots of each character. As we narrow our field of view a bit, we get the full shot. A full shot showcases the subject from top to bottom and has a nice balance between character and environment. Full shots are used in a variety of ways, like for fight scenes or action scenes or dance scenes. The key is to leave a little bit of space in the frame above and below the subject. Some of the most beautiful shots in film history are wide shots, as they often showcase both creative environments and interesting subjects at the same time. Next up, we have the medium shot. A medium shot is how I classify any shot that starts to cut parts of the subject off. Medium shots are a bit more intimate as they start to have a greater emphasis on the character and their emotions, but don't yet completely render the environment obsolete. While medium shots are often used for dialogue, they are usually still wide enough to allow room for some action slash movement in the frame. At the widest end, we have the medium wide shot, where only a small portion of the subject is cut off. The cowboy shot is next, which is a little bit tighter, cutting off subjects just below the waist. This was used to keep a cowboy's gun holster in the shot and therefore can suggest confrontation. Next is just the regular medium shot, which goes from above the waist to above the head. This is a very common shot as this look is very familiar to us in terms of how we typically perceive interactions with other people. Finally, there's the medium close, which goes from the chest to just above the head. It's very similar to a regular medium shot, but serves to reduce distractions from the environment and emphasize character expressions or object details even a bit more. 
For this reason, a lot of dialogue scenes are filmed using this shot size. What's the next step of your master plan? Crashing this plane. One thing to take note of is that medium shots often change throughout a shot, whether that's from a character moving within the frame or from the camera moving through the scene. It's obviously also very common to have a variety of medium shots in one frame when you have multiple subjects in the scene. While most medium shots are typically filmed with lenses that range from 35 to 105 millimeters, there are some exceptions, like the Revenant or any Terrence Malick film, which regularly used wide field of view lenses like 16 millimeters and got really close to their subjects, which created a more distorted look, but kept a bit more emphasis on the environment at the same time. Last but not least, we have the close-up. Close-up shots and extreme close-up shots are the most intimate type of shot and are therefore used to highlight emotion or to bring the audience in to focus on something important. Typically, the tighter the shot, the larger or closer the subject appears, meaning more emphasis is placed on the subject slash details within the scene, officially rendering the environment mostly obsolete. To make a shot tighter, you can either move the camera closer to the subject and or use a lens with a higher millimeter on it, like 105 millimeters, for example. A close-up shot will almost fill the frame, usually chopping off a bit of the top of the subject's head. Close-ups are mostly of faces, but can be hands or other props as well. An extreme close-up, however, seeks to isolate or emphasize a specific area slash detail like eyes, lips, or a crucial detail that you want the audience to notice. And since an extreme close-up will probably fill the frame, the environment becomes completely non-existent slash irrelevant at this moment. In movies, close-up shots are regularly presented as insert shots, where the camera will cut in from a wide or medium shot to a close-up, directing the audience's attention to the exact detail or action you want or need them to see, and are often from a particular character's point of view. Insert shots are most often used to present critical narrative details, to clarify something of importance, and for dramatic emphasis. They are also a great way to enter a new environment rather than always using a wide shot. While each shot size communicates a different narrative value in itself, the order or particular sequence that a collection of shots are placed during post-production will ultimately determine the effectiveness of the story. Having said that, shot size is not the only filming technique you need to consider when composing a shot. Other techniques such as camera angle and camera movement are equally as important elements to an effective composition. To learn about more filming techniques and how they can be used in combination with shot size to create even more impactful shots, make sure to check out the other videos in this series. Links are in the description below. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.